And there's a box of uh, walnut cutoffs I get from a local mill. A couple chunks of oak in here too as well. So I, uh, I cut some of them up and uh, I did this, you know, planed them flat. I got them glued up together and I'm going to throw this on the lathe. First I want to cut some, uh, I'm gonna cut some, I'm gonna cut a uh, vertical, you know, slot going across this way and that way so the I know where the center is in my my little uh, my little dead center thingy on the lathe will fit right in there. Approximate center there, just so I know where the, the um, I forgot what the frigate's called. The thing on the lathe, the, it's got the point and the teeth, uh, it will grab right in there. That'll be nice for that. I like doing that with the bandsaw to help me out there. There it is. Yay. Okay. Okay, that's the, the thing I was talking about, the spur whatever it's called um, the wood grabber thingy it'll go right into that those slots nicely put that down there there get this thingy I think it's called a, a spur center or something I don't know Good grip. Good grip on that. Okay. My hammer back on my my junk shelf up here. This is all my lathe thingies. And there's more lathe thingies over there. Including Mr. Traveling Gnome right there. And let's see. Okay. And I'd rather I like this live center better than this live center. I can remember that. See, it's called a live center. Another thing I can't remember. It's Spurs Center, I think it's called. Right here. I have to look that up again. I can't remember what the hell it's called. In that stupid old age. Make that out a little bit more. Okay, what I like to do is I lock this in place. And then I get a, uh, I keep this little piece of two by three here. And uh, let's move that down like that. And get this and tap on that a little bit. There. And that's in there pretty well now. Hopefully. Nice. Okay. 
Okay. Lock this in tight. And I can crank down on this a little bit. Push that point into the wood a little bit. There. Good. Look at that. Nice in there. Good and tight. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I got more stuff to set up. I got to put my dust collector vacuum thing together and everything. That's really boring stuff. I'll do that off camera and I'll start filming again. After. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever shown this before. This is a, a hang a tarp behind me. I'm, I'm sure a lot of guys do this. I hang a tarp on the wall behind me on the lathe so this way at least when I'm roughing because I mean chips go everywhere. I will get chips from here like all the way up to the garage door over there. It'll be ridiculous. Stuff will be everywhere. So this thing helps contain you know also just a couple hooks on the ceiling and it, it contains all the chips in one spot. It's really helpful. Okay I got my uh tool rest set up so this thing doesn't hit it. I got my vacuum set up and it just clears it too. It's, that thing helps a lot. It's under there. Rockler makes this thing. I have it hooked up down there. There's my makeshift uh, adapter that goes to my 4 inch dust collector. And right here, hold on. I had it here. Hold on. Right here, it's hooked to my sweatshirt, it's a little remote control that turns on my dust collector. Come on, I'll put a link to the, the Amazon link because this, this is a remote control unit that you can pretty much hook up to anything. It's uh, just wired the input and output, and it's rated for regular house current, but it's rated, I believe, up for up to 20 amps, which is great because. Uh, I think the dust collector system I got is a 15 amp uh, dust collector and I didn't want to keep breaking the circuit and I could not find a remote uh, system that was rated for more than 15 amps or more than 10 amps actually. I finally found one. I'll post a link to that in the description of this. If I remember, hopefully I remember. I'm sure I will, but who knows. Okay, and oh, I almost forgot. This is actually a chainsaw chainsaw face guard. It's just a screen. I actually bought this in a garage sale for like a dollar or something. It's really good. It also has uh, ear protection that you, you hook onto here, but I don't use that for the lathe. I will use it for other things like my planer and things that are super loud, but the, the lathe isn't all that loud. I don't think you need ear protection from a lathe. And, okay, this is my favorite roughing couch, my only roughing couch, so this is my favorite one, uh, Robert Sorby. I forgot what they call this coating on here, it's, it's not just to make it look, you know, ghetto, gold, fabulous, but uh, there is a purpose to it. This is, it's, so, it's really sharp, good and sharp, yeah, you can, grabs the fingernail and you know it's sharp, okay. And... What is that rule of thumb? Anchor, uh, anchor bevel cut or something like that. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to do that with this. It's awfully, yeah. You know, might have to move this out a little bit, but we'll see. Let's see how this works. Okay, let me start the dust collector.
it's nowhere near <clears throat> around, but um, as you see, and my tool presentation may not be exactly the right way, and I do mess up all the time, and I'm very amateurish at this. This is by no means an instructional video on how to do this. This is just a, I guess, a video record of me doing this, maybe for my grandkids to see this in the future. I mean, look at Grandpa screwing stuff up. But anyway, um, you'll see me, and I hold, I'll put my hand right up close like that, and that's not because I want to hold this tilt. It's mainly so I could stop the chips from going anywhere and making them fall down in there. Because as soon as they get anywhere near here, that thing just sucks them right down. And a lot of times this will fill up, and you'll see me like, dump it like that I try to dump it and not hit you know not engage the piece if I if I can I just dump it like that and you'll see the chips go in there okay sorry just felt like I had to explain some of that and definitely uh, say that this is not an instructional video I am no by no means anywhere near an expert at wood turning okay turn my vacuum back on quite round some little flat spot there 
That's rounded there. That's flat there. I got a little bit longer to go. Now, uh, I think I turn wood a little bit slower than the average person, I think. But uh, it's just that, I don't know, I'm afraid to screw up. So I, I try to take my time. And, and I don't want to, like, go too rough on the tool either. I try to, you know, take it easy. You know, I don't want to dull the crap out of it right away. But there are argu arguments against that. Like they say, the faster you go, the less time you're using the tool. And I don't know. But, okay, I'll continue, I'll film, I'll, I'll do this off camera, I'll just keep rounding this off. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out, this uh, dust collection system, you see there are chips, but, I mean, look at that. Normally, without this thing, this floor would be covered by now, with that, with what I've done here. There'd be at least a half inch deep of chips here, at least. So it's huge difference. I mean, the difference is just tremendous with this little, little thing under there, the blue uh, suction thing. It's a really, really amazing. I'll we'll turn this thing on. Hold on. Well, it helps that I got a, you know, it's just the Harbor Freight. The Harbor Freight dust collector. Pretty much got this rounded. I mean, there's like ever slight little flat spot. I'll get that soon, but it's pretty much rounded all. Again, this is uh, some black oak. I mean, uh, black walnut and uh, I don't know what kind of oak it is. Just regular oak or golden oak. I don't know. Walnut and oak. There it is. To be continued.
Okay. This will be a long time ago. Things never come out perfectly straight. It's because my uh, I can't drill exactly straight. So if you look, it's close, but yeah, you know, it's not exact. But that's okay. It's supposed to be there and there. Okay. Uh, I should be able to get rid of this now. Too. I'm gonna have to see how I can sand this off, maybe. Yeah, I'll just cut it off at the bandsaw. There we go, that's better. Oh, that should fit. My camera would freaking focus. What the hell's wrong with this thing? There we go. Okay. This needs to be. You cut in a little bit. Okay, I might mount this back up and cut that in just a little bit. So this little, it seems like it's pushing out. So let's, let's see what I mean. Yeah, there shouldn't be that much of a gap. That's because this thing can't go all the way in. And I know this is flat. This one is not flat too. It's a little angle right there. I gotta get rid of some of that meat in there. Okay, let me uh, take that off and mount this in the truck. I'll stop filming for that. That's kind of silly. Okay. I guess I use this for cutting on. I like grind it so it's an angle for making uh, when I make my tenons. I just use it this way. See that? I cut like that. It makes a nice little angle for the. You know, I guess they call it a dovetail. It's not really a dovetail joint, but it's a dovetail in the sense it's like kind of the same angle. But okay, let's see. <laughs> I sharpen this so well that even the edge of this is this edge is kind of sharp even though it's like a complete 90 degree angle but it's pretty sharp and you notice I went kind of negative with this I went in a little bit so I figured you know negative is okay positive was, was bad so you know if this doesn't connect now to that base the bottom part of this then I know you know it's, it's this thing that's at fault not the top let's see Out of the truck, flip this whole thing around, mount it on that uh, conical thing, and I'll put a uh, life center here and get rid of the fill. Okay, this thing mounted up here. And there. Kind of just tighten there. Okay. okay. Beautiful. All right, now this will straighten this out when it spins now. Let's see. Okay. Get that right there. This thing's great, but it, it gets in the way. It's a pain in the ass. I wish I could figure out a better way to mount this. I wish I could mount it like on a stand out there where it's not on the bed at all, and then I could probably have more freedom as far as like how I can position this thing. Just right now, you're limited with this, and this thing gets in the way of this. And then if this is too big, then this thing, this, the tail stuff can't come up all the way. It's really great. It works amazingly. I mean, look, I've been turning this thing. That's all I got on the floor here. I mean, I'd say at least half of it goes into that chute and into your bus collectors, which is fabulous. I love it, but it is a bit of a hassle to set up. And I've tried it all different ways. I flip this upside down, I take this out, I put it the other way, mount it on this side over here. That's, I've tried every configuration you can think of with this thing. Out down there, okay. This is in the way. I'll just give me a little handle. Right there. There yeah, it's pretty solid now. It's good, it's good. Not going anywhere. Alright. Okay. Turn. 
There's my remote, turn on my... Sawdust. It's really, that thing is spectacular for when you're sanding. I mean, it works great for this, and it, it does minimize what gets on the floor significantly. But uh, as far as sanding, oh my god, I think it gets like 100% of sawdust when you're sanding. I mean, everything's sucked in there. It helps if you have a decent uh, decent powered dust collector. I'm not using the shop back. I'm using the Harbor Freight. Uh, supposedly it's two horsepower. I don't know how accurate their ratings are. You know, 1500 CFM. I don't think it's quite that powerful, but it's, I'd say it's at least three times as powerful as my shop back was, so it, it works a lot better. And uh, I can show you a lot. I'm still behind my curtain. I can take my curtain down because I'm going to put the video in my garage. And uh, there's my Harbor Freight dust collector. The motor's up here mounted horizontally on a piece of plywood that's supported down here. And there's a big old uh, super sized uh, dust deputy cyclone there that goes down into the barrel. And then any fine dust that makes it past the cyclone goes in here and gets filtered out by that. And then put in that bag. And I've had that for several months now. I'm down here every day and saying that's 
all that's gotten into the bag. You really can't see that much in there. And I've had to empty this thing three times, only because it's a smaller barrel because I didn't want this thing hitting my ceiling. So I cut the barrel down a little bit just so I can, because this is on wheels too. It's still on wheels. That's the original, uh, well, extended. I extended the base. That's the base that the Harbor Freight Dust Collector comes on. And you can see I extended extend it down there with some angle iron and move the, I move the caster so they're all the way at the end over here. And that's my uh, homemade uh, floor vacuum attachment for my four inch hose. Made it a backdrop, a photography backdrop tube. That's what that is. Cut that up and make one of those things. Okay, I moved the cool rest is out of there. This thing can, uh, I think call this the banjo. I think banjo can stay here. Not really in the way. I moved my dust chute. So it's right up around this thing. Just clears there and it just clears there. Just don't get my finger in there because I just, you know, well, I shouldn't have your fingers anywhere near. But anyway, okay, so let's get started sanding. Oh, I love this stuff. This is really cool. I wrote here because, you know, so I can have it like this. 150, I start with 150, go to 600. Sometimes I'll use rougher grit. And uh, what I do is I actually save. These are uh, sanding discs for my uh, random orbital, and when the uh, sometimes this, the fuzzy it no longer wants to stick to the spell curl on the sander, and it's not the sander's fault because other discs will stick fine. It's just all of a sudden there's no more fuzz on these, I guess. But the sandpaper still, you know, really good. You know, look at that; it's in good shape. So I'll save these and I'll use them here. And uh, I do have some rough ones. I think there's a 40 grit in there and stuff like that. I, I save them for you know, if you need some some heavy duty sanding on here, which I hardly ever need. But this I'll go from 150 to 600, and uh, that's usually about as high as I go to 600. That's all I need. Sometimes, you know, maybe a nice bowl, you want to really go up to a thousand or something crazy, but you know, you don't have to. Okay, I'll start this. I don't know if I'll film all of this because this is, you know, sanding is very boring. I mean, in fact, I might go get my headphones, put my headphones on and uh, listen to some uh, music while I'm sanding. <laughs> And when I sand on here, I I will like press with one finger and I'll move the paper up and down like this. The only reason I'm not trying to like sand with this motion, that motion's not really accomplishing much. What it does accomplish is if you have like a, a if you hold this paper still on here and, and don't like change it at all, you'll end up with like grooves because there are there is there might be like a slight. You know, you'll end up finding the pattern in the sandpaper and if you move it around you're giving it more a, more of a random sanding pattern because you're changing what part of the sandpaper you're using as it's spinning because I notice if you just go like this and just hold it still and go like this you'll end up with with grooves that'll show up a little more so if you do this it kind of it helps eliminate at least and that's in my experience, I don't know, maybe you guys have other opinions on how to sand on a lathe, but that's what I do. Okay, that's all. I will start again. My remote.
Oak and walnut. Looks nice. Okay. All right. Now I can start uh, some polishing and uh, I'll take this off of here. Okay, hold on for one minute here. Let me stop for one second. Okay, I'm going to get this uh, dust thing out of the way because I don't need that anymore here. Okay, now if uh, this stuff is pretty cool. I, another YouTuber, uh, PF, I think she goes by PF Wood Turning, Wood Turnings, or PF Wood Turn. I don't know. I'll, I'll see if I can put a link to her, uh, to her YouTube channel in the description of this. So anyway, she's the one who turned me on to this stuff. And if you watch some of her videos, I think in the description she has a link and there's a uh, discount code. So I don't have a discount code because these people aren't sponsoring me because I'm just a schmuck, you know. But anyway, uh, but I do like this stuff, even though they think I'm a schmuck. That's okay. But anyway, uh, yeah, let's see how this looks. Get some nice clean paper towels. Probably a cotton rag is better, but all I have on me right now are some uh, paper towels. I know it's going to have to do. Put some of this on there. Some on the underside here. And what I'll do is I'll turn it really, really slow. Just to, just to spread it on all sides, all the way around. I fix it anyway there okay that's step one but uh oh I wanted to stop for a second I could, maybe you guys are wondering I'm filming with my cell phone and but I'm not using my hands how is that possible I'll show you okay yeah I'm actually here I hit the stop button while trying to take this thing off of me, but this is what I use. It's a, uh, it's like a gooseneck thing. You can bend this to like any shape and it holds your phone firmly. And, uh, I just put this around my neck and I put it so it's looking at whatever I'm doing. So it's really cool. I can film whatever I'm doing and use both of my hands. Okay. I'm going to, put it back together because I'm probably going to hit the stop button anyway trying to put this back on. Okay, that was step one of Axe uh, Abrasives, you know, well, Wood Turning, Wood Turner's best friend from Axe. That's the sanding, abrasive sanding paste, and this is the polish restoring paste, which is like the secondary, I guess the finer grit than the other stuff. Again, I'm doing the same thing. Put the lid over there. See, I've been using this a little bit already. I like this stuff. It makes a nice uh, conservative polish. It's not very, uh, it doesn't make it like a high gloss, which I don't like high gloss anyway. It's, ni it's not 19. 74 anymore and everything's covered in lacquer and shellac that's 
no longer the case. I like I like just a nice dull sheen. Just enough to let you know that it's been worked very well and polished nicely, but not gaudy. Okay. Start again. I'll start slow just to spread it around. They say it's always a good habit to uh, get in the habit of slowing it all the way down before you stop it. Because uh, a lot of times you're going to want to start off in a slow speed anyway. And if you got it cranked up fast already, well, now it's you know, too bad. You, know? you have to slow it down and then start it again or whatever. But it's much easier if it's already started off slow. All right, this looks great. This isn't exactly, it's not perfect, but you know, hey, hardly anything I make is perfect. I can see there's some, uh, like, green, these holes with the green, but that's okay. I don't mind that. Looks really nice. Okay, now you got to finish this off. I probably got to sand this top where this was in. I might have to sand that a little bit by hand. And then I'll put the guts in this and we'll see how it looks. Okay, here it is off the lathe. This looks pretty good. I'm gonna, I'll sand that a little bit anyway, because it, it, it can't get in there when it's on the lathe. And the bottom's not too bad. I might put some kind of oil in there or something just to seal that up. One thing I could never get perfect with this damn old lathe, I guess because it's not exactly, you know, the centers are great. They, they line up perfect, but I guess the drill bits are always off. So this happens. Like when you turn the mill. Oh, this actually looks better than most. But I always, yeah, this one's actually not bad. I usually get it where it gets way off center. Well, there, a little bit. See how that's off just a little bit? When you turn it, it like goes out of, out of center, but I don't know why. I guess that's because of the drill bits aren't perfect. And what happens is this hole is a little off center 
and this might be off center. This might be off center too. So when you put the two of them together and then turn it, it, it goes it goes back and forth. But this looks pretty good. I like it. Okay, let's go get the guts. Okay, this is my super messy workbench. Well, I guess I've seen worse, but it's pretty bad. I actually had to go and uh, drill this a little deeper because I made this about a three quarters of an inch too long. I, I measured right, I thought I did, but I guess I didn't. Okay. Uh, let's see. This goes together like this. Like this. That. And this is like this, I think. Yeah. in there and drilled some holes. I don't dare use a drill to put these in here or, you know, impact driver or whatever. This is the old manual screwdriver method. There we go. April, May. She's four months. Holy cow, she's four months already. The baby's Kyler. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I forgot something. Hold on. Uh, I do this every time. There's a retaining bar I gotta put in there. Right there, this has to go with the same screws. Okay, here, let me stop. Okay, I realize it's easier if I put this on first. I already did that. I don't know if you saw it. I didn't film the part right. I drilled this to the Forstner bit so that little plate can be recessed in there. They call that the drive plate. I guess because it's what drives the grinder. Drives me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Dad jokes. Sorry. Okay. There's that little gizmo. And if I put this on here, it holds the uh, holds everything in place. There, see as you tighten that, it pulls in on that. There we go. Hopefully those holes stayed aligned in there. I can't really see. I think they did. Yeah. Okay, and then this has to go in there. Something like that. I'm better off, yeah, I don't know why I do that every time. Better off doing this. There we go. easy since I already put the screw in once. And I'm just putting it back into the same hole that I, I pre-drilled with a uh, 
this little this little teeny drill bit for these little screws. Okay, that one's good and tight. And I'll do this the right way for this one. Put on here. Hope the screwdriver is magnetic. This is unusually deep, the bottom of this, only because I, I screwed up and I didn't make it. I made it a little too long for the mechanics of this thing, the guts, but that's okay. If I, if I wanted to, I could cut this off and sand it, but I don't want to make it any shorter. I like it the way it looks. It'll still work. It's fine. This does not affect functionality. And there it is. There's your grinder. And it's grinding. Look at that. And that's the original position right there. That's how it should sit, I guess, to look pretty. And there you have it. Pepper mill that originated from these boxes of scraps. And there's the the next one that I'm going to make, I'll try to, you can see that, oh, if I can get it over here, see, this looked like this before, isn't that cool? Yeah. I think something like that could end up looking like this little pretty thing, it's pretty, right? It's pretty cool. Okay, and uh, what's nice is you can adjust this, you loosen it and it's like, a looser grind because the little thing falls down out of there. It's pretty cool. Not supposed to, but yeah. Yeah, there it goes. You can see it loosen up. And when you tighten it, it pulls that lower, the female part of the grinder in, or the male part of the grinder into the female part. Ah, I like that. It says, all right, made in USA. Stainless steel, so the wood grown in the USA, turned over there on my lathe in the USA, North New Jersey here. Oh, there we go. Very cool. Hope you enjoyed watching this.